As a little boy in Jamaica, Kevin King lived a life of simple pleasures, while his grandparents instilled in him a strict set of values. Now looking back, uh, it, it is one of the best life experiences anybody could ask for. Um, the things that are instilled in you at such a young age, if you pass somebody that's an, an elder, you have to say good morning. It's not a, it's no question, you don't have to, it's not a choice. <laughs> you have to say good morning. If you don't, by the time you get home, there'll be something waiting for you. At 13, Kevin left Jamaica. Armed with his grandmother's words, manners will take you around the world, Kevin came to live with his mother, who had immigrated to Canada when he was a baby. It wasn't easy adjusting to a new life. Living in Canada, I don't have to see my grandparents, having no family around me except one person, you know, my mother. Kevin eventually settled into a life in Canada, hanging out with friends, playing basketball, and drifting along until a friend's tragic shooting death moved him to make changes in his life. I think it was, it was then an opportunity for me to reach down inside of me and find out what I'm good at, what I'm capable of doing, what kind of talents do I have. He discovered a desire to make things better for people, to make a difference. Kevin was elected to the student council, and for the first time, the school had a breakfast club and school dances, and school spirit was revived. Kevin was making a difference. He joined the Rexdale Youth Council, where he helped organize a homework club and HIV education campaigns. The group grew from five members to over 50. We had uh, people from the gangs, people who had kids, people who were out of school, and all brought it together so that they could somehow achieve a focus on where they want to get to in their life. A founding member of the Toronto Youth Cabinet, Kevin was elected chair and represented 300,000 youth across the city. Among other achievements, he advocated and was successful in having $800,000 designated for youth violence prevention. He's currently at George Brown College in his last year of the business marketing program. I think we're very fortunate uh, to have Kevin uh, in our college community. Uh, he impacts on the broader communities that we serve, and I think we're uh, very fortunate to have him here in Canada. Uh, he's a tremendous inspiration for many, many uh, young people uh, in our college and beyond. Kevin was elected president of George Brown Students Association and is very proud of his accomplishments in that role. He's responsible for the development of a new constitution and restructuring the organization. It is just a whole, a whole different, different experience. And so I was able, I'm able to work at a higher level and understanding the importance of teamwork, understanding the importance of trust, of confidence and of hard work and dedication. In 2000, he was selected as the Presidential Classroom Scholar and spent a week at the Future World Leaders Conference in Washington, D.C. His latest project is the creation of the Rexdale Foundation, a scholarship fund for young people. Kevin likes to quote Martin Luther King, who once said, you ought to believe in something so fervently that you'll spend the rest of your days fighting for it. I believe in something now in my life. And I, that thing that I believe in, I believe that all people should be given equal opportunity to achieve excellence in whatsoever they endeavor to do. I believe that all people are fundamentally good and fundamentally have good things to offer. I think that immigrants, youth of color in this city are, ju are just as a uh, good contributor to the fabric of this city than, uh, than any, uh, well, just in the same way as any other youth in this city. Kevin King is making a difference. He's an advocate, a visionary, and a leader. At least by example. Right? He, he lives his life w with such dignity that you look at him and you go, wow. But I think the core part of my motivation and inspiration started when I was a kid in Jamaica. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here. That was my grandparents, guaranteed, no questions asked.